Look, I think what you're going to need is some zombie takeout. I can give you the name of some professionals that can help you out. Hello and welcome to episode 422 of Zombie Takeout. Zombie Takeout. The B Movie and Cult Movie Show. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And before we get to this week's movie, we've got quite a bit of um, listener submitted. Um, a couple from the directors of the films we reviewed last week. Um, Drew McDonald, writer director of Here There Be Monsters, uh, emailed us back. I when I put up last week's episode, I replied to the emails that we received, letting them all know that the episode was up. Um, cool. Drew, Drew McDonald of there be, here, here There Be Monsters replied saying. Thanks so much for the review and all the kind words. Really glad you enjoyed the film, and I sent it to Savannah, our actress, and she was stoked that you guys gave her such praise, too. Um, oh, I'm sorry. She had to... <laughs> she had to listen to two guys. <laughs> <laughs> Poss- probably, I would presume, just you know, her film. You know, maybe not the entire <laughs> yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, Joe Badon, uh, writer-director of um, Sister Tempest, replied saying, Amazing, this is fantastic, I'm sharing now, thank you so much. Um, the the uh, person who emailed us about uh, Sweet Revenge also replied, but they just said, um, thanks, have a great day. So I'm guessing they replied um, before uh, you know, they listened to the episode. Um, also, Joe, I don't, I'm not sure about Drew McDonald because I couldn't find any current socials for him or the movie. But Joe Badon was sharing it all over the place. Cool. Um, quite a bit. I ended up following all the socials for him and, and Sister Tempest. Um, and we, as of last night, hit 42 downloads on that episode, which is quite a bit ahead of in our usual. So thank nice. you, Joe. Uh, we also got some feedback from Bodo on Twitter. Um, I did happen to finally watch Sister Tempest. I agree with you guys. Definitely a combination of Money Python meets Doctor Who meets the 70s. <laughs> Anne Hutchinson kept sticking in my brain, but I couldn't remember why until must have been something from college. And then he posted a screenshot of the Wikipedia, Wikipedia article about the Puritan who you mentioned last time. Yeah. Um, and then, in well, before we get to Bodo's second bit of uh, feedback, I posted a voicemail from him on our socials. It was a bit too long to fit into the episode, and it was about Labyrinth, which we reviewed like a month ago. So I didn't want to... No, it was Ladyhawk. Oh, sorry, Ladyhawk, which was like a month ago. So yeah. I didn't want to f- crowbar it in here. It's on our socials. Please check it out. It's very funny. It's uh, he he's come up with the ultimate Matthew Broderick movie. I yeah. think mm-hmm. uh, it just ties everything together. It was incredibly thorough. Thank you, Boda. Um, <laughs> he also, in reference to this week's movie, said, uh, "Fed Milo." The beginning confused me. I thought I was watching Men in Black. The music, anyway. And um, then he said, Bad Milo should have been made 30 years before it was. Combination of critters and gremlins. No horror, no <laughs> comedy. Love story? Two brains. One of my titles was Ghoulies Gonna Sue. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, it was you know, practically the same creature, I think, almost. Yeah, it looked very similar, yeah. Um, yeah. And on to this week's movie, which is from 2013, Bad Milo. Of course, that brings us to the impromptu plot summary. Sponsored by Stress. When fighting monsters, beware that you do, you do not create one. And also brought to you by Dr. Highsmith. He's a Dr. Witch. Uh, who, who will help you? Mm. All right. So we have this uh, this poor guy. He's just uh, just going through it right now. Um, he, uh, his job is just an absolute mess. Uh, he's having some stomach troubles to say the least Mm. and he's told of course he can't he he has to ease up on the stress somehow and so of course i'm like oh another (laughs) terrible movie to watch during these times Mm -hmm. (laughs) like this in the lighthouse would be like the ultimate movies you shouldn't watch during (laughs) (laughs) but anyway uh so he uh his problems come to a hit and he's just he's got to go see a doctor about him and um they i'm trying about to get his stomach issues yeah about his stomach issues and of course he also gets recommended to a shrink mm-hmm. well, uh and the doctor finds a, a scanner 
Yeah, the doctor finds a weird shaped polyp, so he's got to get into scan even more. Mm-hmm. Um, and he recommends to go to a shrink because, of course, stress is just not uh, mm-hmm. not his friend either. Uh, his job, w- what happens at his job, of course, he's working for a financial services company. Oddly unnamed in the whole thing, too. Mm-hmm. No office thing or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um no, no, you know, Bill at the be- at the doorway or anything. Um, he's been taken from an accounts manager to HR, and uh, he has to fire people, which is pretty much like uh, an episode of Cheers, actually, where Norm Peterson <laughs> went from an accountant yeah. to the HR guy because he was such a friendly guy and everybody liked him. That- it's a sitcom trope. They thought, uh, I don't know. I don't know how many times that's happened, actually. I've seen it a number of times where the really nice, you know, protagonist is taken from their comfortable job and forced to fire people. I really thought that was a Cheers, like... Uh, well, I when know. I started with Cheers, but... Maybe. It, it has been used in other sitcoms. And then, of course, uh, the, the gag in Cheers was that when Norm wanted to get out of doing it, he started, he went to talk to his boss about it. And his boss thought he was gonna get he was gonna get fired, so he, no one would return his calls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he got to get out doing anything because <laughs> nobody wanted to talk to him at all. Right. Everybody started avoiding him. But here, uh, poor uh, poor Duncan, um, they, they, he's stuck in like a, a converted men's room, which I mean, of course, that's an office space kind of thing. Okay, you were uh, thinking office space. I went to Brazil. Oh, yeah, yeah, Brazil, too, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, Office Space was a basement, you know, (laughs) which, of course, you know, with Steven Root in the movie, you know, you're thinking Office Space all the way. Uh, (laughs) uh, So, and yeah, he's stuck in in the men's room with this other kind of incompetent guy who somehow gets into his system, too. I don't understand how that worked. Uh, But then... Uh, they they put those problems on hold. They kind of circle around a little bit. He, you see his uh, his mom is uh, married to a much younger man, and his mom is uh, pressuring him to have kids, and uh, so much so that she hired a, a fertility uh, doctor to come to dinner mm-hmm. with them. <laughs> and so um, he. Uh, pretty much tells him to fuck off and Mm. justifiably so and Um, uh, his mother and her husband also have a tendency to share a bit too much about their sex lives right right um and then we uh let's see get to i think that we get to the The therapist uh, well we get to the first episode of his stomach problem Mm. coming out oh Okay, yeah, we do. You're right. He comes out and uh, he winds up killing the guy in, that he's sharing the office with, mm-hmm. and he sneaks back in, literally, and um, wakes up the next day to mm-hmm. find you know the news that his you know cubicle, his QB, his uh, ah, yeah, somebody tried doing that too. And <laughs> oh God, really that, yeah. you've heard that IRL? Yes, I have. Oh God. Um, and um, <laughs> and uh, luckily, I have not had to share a cube in a very long time, actually, mm. even before this. Even as a temp, which is really weird. Mm. Um, but the office, and, his QB is killed, and yeah, he sees it on the news. Right, so he has to figure out what's going on, but he, uh, they, they just, I, I, he, um, nobody can really say. They think it's like a raccoon of some mm. sort, because it's just this small creature. Right. That just clawed him to death. But before uh, this, we they were introduced. He met the shrink. He went to the shrink. Oh, he went to the shrink before that. I thought he went to the shrink yeah, after. It but... was. I have my notes. It's before the the QB dies. Um, and he, the the shrink just turns out to be an annoying hippie. Yes. Uh, who's? You're right. Uh, he. That's right. He went to the shrink before. The uh, the stepfather yeah. and. Uh, Okay, I knew yeah. I was gonna get. I knew I wasn't gonna get the order right because they they really do just kind of circle around with all of these different subplots at the same time. Mm-hmm. And um, right, the the shrink is just kind of like, yeah, man, what like what is uh what do we do here? 
Um, that's when. Uh, oh, that's what it. No, he. I thought he escaped first. But no, he escapes again, mm-hmm. and then they're waiting for him to come back, and that's when he gets his, the his, uh, fertility doctor. His power up uh, turns into a monster. That that comes out his ass. And right. It turns out that that polyp is the killer. And, yeah. yeah. Um, so the first time it's when he's at home, it gets out and it kills his cubie. Second time it comes out while he's talking to his shrink. And goes and kills the fertility doctor. Yeah. In a very trauma way. Yes. Or, or make them die slowly. I don't yeah. know. Um, and then uh, he, the, the kicker is... He has to go back inside. Yeah. Yeah. So he has to um, go to an uncomfortable place. Mm-hmm. You mean the back of a Volkswagen Beetle? Oh, thank God. I was setting you up for that. <laughs> I was so hoping you were the line that. slightly, but yeah, it's been a minute. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> so... Let's uh, let's sum this disaster up here. Um, <laughs> it's interesting because my take on it is very different. He um, so let's see. He uh, they they come. They the job turns out that uh, it's not just that he's firing people; it's that there are illegal things going on, and uh, his boss is pretty much fucking everybody over. And then he finally weaponizes his anger mm. <laughs> at his boss. Uh, and in the middle of all that, after all this uh, terrible stuff, his uh, his wife tells him, or girlfriend tells him, that uh, she's pregnant after he just laid all this crazy stuff out to her, mm-hmm. which is uh, terrible timing. And uh, so uh, they, the therapist, of course, is trying to work this out of him, uh, has him meet his father, brings mm-hmm. the father in later for them to work it out. The great and, Stephen uh, Root playing a horribly infuriating character. Yes. And uh, and uh, I guess we could say hilarity ensues at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it starts, of course, with a trope. One of two tropes in the movie that need to die. It starts kind of toward the end of the movie and then circles back to the beginning. Yeah. We start at the climax and then it's all flashback, which is horribly fucking annoying and overdone yeah um but we get toby huss as the doctor he's always great oh yeah yeah um although patrick warburton played his boss i think i might be over patrick warburton i was expecting more from him in this honestly um yeah i they had me at patrick warburton and i was excited i, I was just expecting Mm. more from him i mean i like the stare at qb <laughs> he, he, but other than that he really didn't do anything but just you know no. play a straight right. guy who is fucking everybody over and and ken moreno was already playing straight exactly you had two straight guys there and uh yeah that that's pretty bad but and, and i will say i guy. mean moreno kicked nail hit it out of the park uh, yeah, I gotta commend him on his performance in this one. He nailed it because he was able to play straight with all of that other shit going on. Right. You know, he played it all brilliantly. Um, the dinner party scene—I know it was intended to push his stress level over the top, but it was practically unwatchable. <laughs> um, I mean, there there are a lot of unwatchable parts to this movie. But are you talk about Camille Don Johnny. Mm-hmm. Well, he was the. The cast was solid. Yeah, yeah. I can't knock any of the cast members, except maybe Warburton, who I think was just underused. I think so. Well, I think a lot of people were underused in this. But I think Warburton just kind of didn't do much with what he had. Mm -hmm. Um, The other trope that needs to die, which is how why the QB dies, he calls him and tells him the QB needed to find this file, and he was looking on um, Duncan's computer. And he accidentally deleted a, fo- a folder that was very important. <laughs> he deletes a folder. Every modern operating system has a fucking trash can f- just exactly <laughs> for that. I can see accidentally deleting something. 
it's in the trash can so you can fix that. I mean, there's deleting a file maybe, but who deletes a fucking folder? That too. Um, <laughs> and I will say that 15 minutes in, I was very tempted to tap. <laughs> Which says a lot for this movie because it came back for me. I actually ended up really liking it. Um, oh, yeah? One thing I, I in that first beginning, though, I'd say the first half hour was rough for me. Um, I really didn't need the sound effects in the bathroom scenes. Well, yeah, you know, and that's that's really where the flaw of the movie is is the movie itself, <laughs> the story. Because well, the concept is great, the performances are solid. Um, the beginning, I think, just is too tropey and too bathroom humor heavy you well know? that's the problem with the movie is the movie is a bathroom humor movie and yeah. I, I mean this could wor- have worked as a horror movie but as a comedy if you're like over the age of 12 you know <laughs> well, it kind of transcended that for me because I really got into the metaphor well yeah I love the and metaphor course, and that was just the, the, the terrible feeling at the beginning of, oh, ha, ha, no stress, huh, you know? Mm-hmm. But but yeah, you can see the metaphor of the anger as, consuming you and destroying. As someone who is prone to losing my temper when I get too stressed and also prone to having gastrointestinal issues when I get too stressed, it, it spoke to me. <laughs> um. I also, going back to the, the specifics of the story, um, I didn't want to laugh at the way Milo, Milo attacked the doctor in the dream, but I couldn't help it. Because <laughs> he's doing a scope, an endoscope on Duncan, and he, you know, he's looking for the polyp, which is now gone, and suddenly Milo just appears on the camera and growls, and somehow he pulls the doctor in and attacks him. I mean, ATM is, uh, no, that's funny. You can't, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to uh, stand against the bathroom humor, but uh, ATM is just too <laughs> good to face And you're not talking you know, about I'm automated teller machines. I'm not dead or anything, you know? <laughs> yeah. I will say it did remind me what, when Milo was re-entering. It remi- the first time, anyway. Reminded me of um, the insect removal scene from Evolution. Hmm. Okay. You know, it's been a I'd while. Like some ice cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did remind me of that a bit. Um, I think after that, um, half, after basically after about the half out, the halfway mark, it gets a lot better. Um, when he sees his father, I love that scene because his father is just despicable. <laughs> And, of course, you know, he, in the heat, he shrink it already told him to stop holding back his feelings. And so he starts going off on his father. Has to rush to his father's outhouse. Um, yeah, his father is all about living in the moment and ignoring anything that happened in the past. You know, basically right. trying to and avoid any responsibility. Um, the, uh, the swerve there is pretty obvious, I yeah. thought, you know, why they, they I had a feeling it was going to happen, but I liked what they did yeah. with it. Um, yeah. But I loved him in the outhouse. You know, Milo comes out and he has to talk Milo down because he doesn't want Milo to kill his father. <laughs> um, although, after the outhouse scene, of course, his, his shirt is you know soiled. And he keeps the shirt on for the rest of the movie. For what was like three days, it seemed like. Pretty much, yeah. And just like the people reacting as he's passing and stuff, you yeah. know. Um. The, the, the scene where he has to feed Milo the mouse. Was that a gerbiling reference? I don't know. I, I thought that too. You know, it's kind of a... I think it was maybe a slight gerbiling reference. Um, I did like this, like seeing him release Milo on Lord Burton's character, though, on his boss. Yeah, well, it was a little weird. Like, okay, so, I mean... <laughs> Having him but, drop you know. trow right in front of the elevator, yeah. <laughs> now I did like the shrink actually, or the actor playing the shrink. Oh well, yeah, just this whole Dennis Hopper kind of thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just wonderful. I thought. Yeah, 
I hated the character at first. He kind of grew on me. You know, because they were well, playing with, you know, the cliche shit shrink tropes, and I kind of that right. annoyed me. Um, but then it wound up actually being, like, a mystical thing yeah, anyway. It worked. <laughs> they, actually, they, they resumed it. Um, he and, actually wound up helping. Yeah. Um, although he had a weapon in his office. He had this big spear when Milo came out. A shrink really shouldn't have a weapon in their office. <laughs> no. He had all sorts of weapons in there, actually. There were all sorts of blades, I think, on the wall right Okay, there. I didn't notice them. I only noticed the big spear he picked up when Milo showed up. Um, yes. Yeah, really bad place for weapons. Right. Um, I did like Ralph and Milo fighting. Oh, yeah. I got a kick out of that. Um, the showdown. Ralph is his father's monster. Um, again, another brilliant metaphor he inherited this monster this stress related monster um yeah and you know i i like that the milo cam wasn't overused just a couple of times we get milo's perspective right very very um evil dead you know the monster cam and also just a straight up horror this might have worked much better mm. than a horror comedy also another kind of scene I didn't want to laugh but I couldn't resist chuckling when Sarah finds uh, Duncan's mother and stepfather's dungeon <laughs> right to put that in the middle of like this scene that's supposed to be really tense where oh. she's like for her life and just like wait what yeah oh. I, I could resist chuckling although Tiki torches are pretty much ruined for me now they, he, she, they show up at a, at a party his mother and stepfather are having a party and Milo has is going after the wife. Um, so, you know, Duncan shows up, sells her to go to the basement, and something is coming, you know, something's trying to get in the door, and all of the party guests grab these tiki torches. It's just a bad image these days. Um, yeah, it's a shame. I mean, this is 13, though. This is yeah, yeah, this is way before. Appropriated, um, but, yeah, yeah. you know, They're as just a fan of the Blue Owl, yeah, it's a shame. Um, and <laughs> I like... We'll get them back. That after he intentionally let Milo out is when Milo became impossible to control. Yeah, he, del- he the the time he gave into it, it got to be too much. I, I just, like I said, I love the metaphor of the film. Uh, that redeemed it a lot for me, and I really related to it. One little bit of trivia: Milo's eye blinks were the only thing done digitally. He was a puppet the entire time. Nice. Um, it they was all just practical. Used CGI on the eyes, huh? Yeah, that was. I appreciate the, the practical effects. I think one joke that did work: um, some of the severance package stuff. Uh-huh. You know, the the condoms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that a lot of that went over my head because I've never worked in an office. Yeah, like, why? Why would you give condoms as a severance? Oh, that was all supposed to be a part of the severance package. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. That was. <laughs> now I get those jokes. Okay. Boulder, he's handling, you know, were all sorts of weird things. The only funny one, of course, was this big pack of condoms to like this middle-aged woman, I think, mm-hmm. too. <laughs> yeah. And there was some kind of offensive key ring. I didn't quite get that one. Like, I'm not sure why this is here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> On the brains. On the brains. The metaphor sold saved it for me. I really love that part. I, I got to go four and a half. Uh, I, I mean, I think what they had here was pretty much a thirty-minute South Park episode that they mm-hmm. stretched yeah. into about an hour and a half. I mean, like I said, if this they they go for a, a straight up horror with maybe a few chuckles here and there with the best jokes. Yeah, this this probably would have worked a lot better. Mm-hmm. Actually, the funniest stuff was in the outtakes during the credits, mm-hmm. where uh, Kavil Donjani is just like, "Oh, is that too far?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're like, "Kind of." Uh, I'm going three. All right, and what have we learned? Ah, uh, we learned that there's uh, people that <laughs> like bathroom humor over the age of ten. <laughs> And I learned that I really need to be very careful about my stress level. (laughs) That's it for Bad Milo. Until next time, we'll be kicking off a 2020 trilogy. Yes, we're giving this horrible piece of shit year trilogy. I wonder if the movies will be any as bad as what actually happened this year. They've got to be better. Uh, And we're kicking Hmm. it off with 2020 Texas Gladiators. 
Can't wait to see that one. The other two are pretty mean. Well, then we got a Corman movie and then Pacific Rim. So it should be an interesting one. I've only seen Pacific Rim of the three, so. I actually have a fantastic idea for a Planet of the Apes prequel. Mm-hmm. I know they've done them already, yeah. but my idea for it would be it's 2020. Things have been so shitty. And we just say, eh, why the fuck not? Apes, you guys just take this. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. (laughs) Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are.